Thanks for coming back down to Court Farm for episode 11 with me, Mr. Sealy P. It's 2.37 here on Court Farm. Boy, did I take a clobbering on the last episode. <laughs> Precision clobbering was what I got. I made one error <laughs> because I was so focused on the growth stage of the crop type, I didn't actually look at the crop type. Thank you to Heavy Metal Gaming for pointing that out. <laughs> um, if we go to our map -a bob soybean. So I went on there, didn't I? With my crop sensors and my fertilising, and it wouldn't fertilise. And I thought it's because it was in the second growth stage. If we go to growth, it's got nothing to do with that. Soybean produces its own nitrogen, so it didn't need any nitrogen. That's why it wouldn't take any. That's why field two did. But I got an absolute hammering of my lack of knowledge of precision farming because I um, went out and did the soil sampling. I could have bought the, the soil samples, but I did the soil sampling. Fair enough. Um, and we got our, our information. Um, but I was then told if I've got these crop sensors on here, these work... Is it, which way around is it? These will only work in daylight, in daytime. I'm sure that's what it says on the information. And if you get the one on the front, that works all the time. Now, I had them both turned on. That was working, no problem at all. But if you're using crop sensors, you don't need to do soil sampling because the crop sensors will um, work out the nitrogen required from your crop because that's what they're designed to do. Now... That's all well and good. I will say that now. That's fine. I, I, okay. Um, that works for nitrogen. Or does it? Um, but it doesn't work for liming. So if I need to know what lime I need on the field, I've still got to do my, my soil sampling. I still need to know my soil types, how much pH is on there already, because those sensors only work for nitrogen. It doesn't work for pH. So all the people that said to me, to message me and said... Why did you do soil sampling and then use crop sensors? I was using the crop sensors because I haven't used them before. And I did wonder whether or not you would get a more precise set of information if you used those as well as having done the soil sampling. But you still need to do the soil sampling because you need your pH information and you need your yield information and your seed rate information and all that stuff. So you, you still need it um, because you need to know what your soil types are for all of that information. So, yeah... Um, but what I'm also going to do at this point, I know I'm having a moan, I am having a moan because I feel a bit got out, I'm not going to lie. Um, yeah, I'm going to cut to a bit of footage. I went, I thought, okay, you know what, have I got this horribly wrong? So I went on to Elm Creek. And on Elm Creek, I had one field that um, I did soil sampling on, one field that hadn't had any soil sampling on, it had a crop in it already. Um, so I thought, right, what I'll do, I'll put fertiliser on it and I'll use crop sensors. So I was also told if you're using these ones on the wing mirrors, you don't need the crop sensor on the front. The difference between the two is one of them can be used in daytime, one of them can be used at night or in low light conditions. You don't need both. Well, I ran both. I had them on and off and it doesn't matter. I don't know what both turned on. So what I did was um, went across the fields. Now, you'll see from the clip in a minute... The one I went across the field with the crop sensors on, no soil sampling done, I had no data. Nothing came up for fertilising. It didn't give me anything. It gave me no information on soil some uh, on on um, on what was required. It, it told me nothing of nitrogen levels. I put some on. But there was no information given. And after I put it on, I then checked through the menus and there was nothing showing as being applied on the field either. Now that could be a problem with Elm Creek, it could be a problem with the sensors. I had them turned on. There's nothing else you can do. They're either on or they're off. So I'm not sure now. I mean, I'm sure I'll get clobbered in the comments again for this. But, but I thought, oh, I'll test it because I've got. I need to... You know, double check that I'm not going insane. Then I suddenly thought, well, maybe they need to work when, because it was on the field had been sown, sowed. Um, maybe it needs to have be into its first growth cycle, so that it needs to have emerged out the ground. So whilst I'm, I don't think I've show, I will show that on the clip. I'm going to show you. Um, I'll probably talk over that as well in a minute anyway. Um, I then waited for the crop to grow, 
into its first cycle so it had emerged out of the ground and then I tried it again still nothing and I didn't use soybean either <laughs> anyway so yeah I'll put those clips up now I have my crop sensors on I've got no values detected um, so no soil sampling has been done which I was told you didn't have to do if you've got the crop sensors if you look bottom left at the map nothing's coming up I'm checking my settings my crop sensors are on well I don't know it's very peculiar like I say I was I was I was told categorically that's exactly what it was you don't need to have um, soil sampling done if you've got crop sensors but as you can see from here I've gone across the field I've put some fertilizer down I've got nothing showing under my precision farming tabs because without the soil sampling down done nothing will show on here so even though when I go onto the nitrogen it's not showing what I've put down already because I've got no soil samples done so you still need to do them regardless um, like I say unless I've, I've done something glaringly obvious wrong I can't think what that could possibly be it's it's very peculiar but anyway i just thought i'd um just answer what people have been saying for my own sanity if nothing else so as far as this episode goes then i've got a soybean harvest to do i've already taken the soybean header out to the field with a tractor and a header trailer we're using court farms harvester um, and I'm, I need to take the harvester out. I need to go, we have leased a spreader because the spreader that Court Farm has only does fertiliser, it doesn't do lime. And we sort out the pH level on that field. So I've leased a spreader, I've bought two bags of lime, they're up at the store. So we're going to whiz up to the store, grab the spreader, we're going to come back and we get that done. We need to then whiz up to Court Farm before it gets too dark um, because I haven't mucked out the cows. Um, the cows we've got down here, KCC's cows, well they're all KCC's cows, but the beef herd, they're out in the pasture so they're fine. The ones in the, in the barn need mucking out, so we're going to need to grab the little telehandler, grab the bucket and we need to muck them out. So we're going to do the mucking out and see the harvest is out there ready to go. So yeah, so we've got some um, liming to do, get that harvest done, get back to the farm, get the um, cows mucked out and we'll be good to go I'll probably go through well, we'll go into October 3 probably next episode maybe into November and um, we'll see what what comes up contract wise what I might start doing skipping a bit further ahead now I'm just because I'm contracting I'm just doing the contracts I'm doing I'm doing the day-to-day -day. Um, yeah that's that's kind of the premise behind it but what we'll do is um, let's get the lights on yeah, we might skip ahead and we'll see what happens weed weed wise if we get any weeds in our fields we'll sort out getting some weeding done so we might need to lease a weeder as well for kcc and we'll get some weeding done see if any more weeding contracts i think i've had one weeding contract come up a few fields across the, across the area have got weeds in them um but i've only had one come up so far i was hoping to get some sort of, sort of some big fields with weeds in we could make a bit of money if we lease a weeder and uh, get going i suppose the other way to do it if we're looking longer term is to buy a weeder and yes obviously we're not going to make money when we first start out but the more contracts we do assuming we get more weeding ones come up like, like with anything any jobs that come up and you're contracting you need to decide at some point the lease cost versus, versus buying the piece of equipment are there enough contracts that after a while you'll pay for that piece of equipment and then you're just all into profit that's kind of the point if it's cheaper to lease a piece of equipment and you're making a bit of profit on every single one you do then do that unless you can find a really cheap piece of equipment which is generally what I try to do I normally try and find the cheapest stuff I can <laughs> that's just and then if I lease it or buy it, it it doesn't matter it's nice and cheap now we didn't bother getting a weight in the end last time because um, we had the crop sensor and I got that with a weight on it but I think what we're going to do I think KCC we need to get a weight we'll purchase one for ourselves so another what do we go for though i don't want to go too big a thousand so we go for one of the ten winkle pac 1000 that should be enough shouldn't it to counter i don't know what do i reckon well we actually we won't go for class because then that'd be specific to this one we'll go a bit lighter so we can see it 
1,100. Let's buy that. We bought some more equipment. <laughs> We're becoming a contracting company. So, this only takes, I think I've got the 3,200 litre one. So we'll have a little bit left over. And it's only a fairly small field we need to do this on to start off with. We'll have a little bit left here. So I think what we'll do is um, I'll push the bag to one side. At some point, we'll buy some more bags of lime. So what I haven't got on here, I haven't got the um, that multi-crop greenhouse thing because that's got those bags that are 8,000 litres. They work out a much cheaper way of doing it. It's not expensive to buy lime anyway. And I'm pretty sure we could probably buy some up the road here with that little farm. So, let's get that on. We're going to head back, mind the deer. I've just been watching, um, I, did I mention the other day that I've, been, I've started watching, I was watching Ollie Blogs, watched Tom Pemberton and all the other people I watch. And on their channels, someone, I don't know who it was, had mentioned Joe Seals. And it's S-E-E-L-S, -E -E not the same spelling as my surname. Um, so I started watching some of Joe Seals stuff. And when I said about all the bad weather and all the heavy rain and stuff, and Ollie Blogs has been showing it on his channel, and they do a lot of cattle on Joe Seals' channel. And the last four episodes have been about the severe flooding they've had on the farm and trying to get the cattle out and trying to get the cattle to high ground because it, I mean, it was awful. I mean, absolutely... Yeah, terrible to watch. You see these poor animals, and they'd, the thing about it was they kept going out and checking on them, and the water levels, some of them were in fields, and they were trapped in the corner of a field, and it was up to their chests, the cows. And they said, if it gets to a point where you know there's a potential for drowning, we, we, and they tried their hardest to get these cows out, and they just couldn't get them out. They cut fences to get the cows to come through the gaps in the fences, and the cows wouldn't move. They wouldn't move out the corner of the field because unbeknown to see when you're looking the field's flooded all you can see is the top surface of the water from where they were as the water then did start to recede there was a big ditch and the ditch was obviously much much deeper and the cows don't, they're not going to want to go through deeper water they've obviously got a sense for it they know where you know they walk in the field they know where it is um they wouldn't move and in the end on two of the other fields they had a guy that was out in his canoe just going around all the flooded rivers and stuff just exploring and they, they enlisted his help and he came out with them in a canoe they went out in waders and they just had to force the animals at one point the animals they were swimming the cows were swimming across you know what was a big open grass field to get them out to get them to sort of safety and, and higher ground it was um quite harrowing to watch you know i know it's been happening all over the place and you know you hear about it and you, you see it on the news and you know but actually seeing it happening and, uh, and he was he was visibly, you know, you could tell, like you said, they'd had the RSPCA out um, and because a lot of their land is on, they've got an RSPB sanctuary and the RSPB people have been out and bird watchers have been out and have been messaging them and they've been going and checking regularly and they were giving them kind of updates and they said that the cows didn't seem distressed. He said they're going to be cold, they're going to have wet legs, wet, wet feet, wet stomachs, they're going to start getting hungry because they can't eat anything there. Um, and he said, but we, we, we're trying everything to get them out and the, the cows just wouldn't move. And he said, the problem is we're in a situation we're risking our, our lives as well by getting into the field, especially when they're trapped in a corner, you've got to get behind them. So there's that risk of injury to yourself and potential drowning and, you know, to get them out. So whilst they seemed happy and okay, I don't know, it's, it's a tricky one, isn't it? I'm, you know... We don't have weather events like that very often here. We do get flooding. It does happen every now and again. But um, And he did say in his video, he said they'd had amber warnings of bad weather and risk of flooding. He said, but we get hundreds of those. And we work very closely with the RSPCA, the RSPB, um, when we get the amber warnings. He said, if we, had to, if we went out to move the cattle every time we got an amber warning, he said, we'd be moving them all the time, which stresses the animals. They don't like it. Um, and he said, and often, nothing happens. He said, had we got a red warning, if it had been red warning, flooding immediately, he said, we would have been out, bang, they would have been gone. He said, but the warning for flooding came middle of the night. Everyone was asleep. He said, we, we, you know, you wake up in the morning to it and it's, it's too late by then. Scary stuff. Anyway, so we're on the field. Let's get that open. So now we're showing at the bottom, 
because I've done the soil sampling, we can see our lime situation. Had I not done soil sampling, even with these sensors, these sensors only work for nitrogen, won't work for pH. So if I'm going to be putting lime on, I need to make sure. I'm going to plough these fields as well. Um, it says needs ploughing. So before we do the next stage, I know that's very anti um, precision farming and it will lower my score initially but at least for three cycles it needs doing we're gonna well plow it anyway um, we'll borrow the plow from I mean suppose we're at a point now we probably should be looking to get on our own plow oh man this is going through this way quicker than I thought we have to get some more or are we yeah we are aren't we we're not gonna make it I thought we might be alright. We're so close, we're only going to have one little strip left to do, aren't we? Ah, oh, so annoying. That's a lot of lime it's got through, though. Now, it did say the lime was okay. It wasn't perfect, the pH level, but it was okay. A lot of people will leave it for three cycles. They'll do their pH... Um, and it will say perfect and then it will switch and it will say okay and they'll, they'll only do the liming on their fields when it says bad oh man look at that that's just typical I've got all the way back just to get some for that yeah so this field will be ploughed and then we're going to sort out what we're going to do because I think as far as crops go um planting season actually into november we could put a winter wheat in winter wheat barley we won't get away with canola but maybe oats um how are we looking further down grasses oh i'll tell you what we could do linseed uh field bean no we're nowhere near on that um alfalfa no rye so we could do linseed or rye actually you know what i feel like putting in something different we haven't done before should we do that with linseed yeah we'll do some linseed i think so we'll put some linseed in this field something a little bit different isn't it i'm gonna go and get some more um lime i'll get that last bit done i think what we've got left in that bag uh should only be what 800 liters that should be enough just to do that little bit then I will go and grab the harvester we'll get out to the field we need to do the soy beaning on that's got to come down to here down to town stores and the contract is all up here on field 81 so as you can see the tractor's out there with the header another tight entrance tight i've got the harvester i've got the tra tractor with the header trailer in there i've got to get the harvester in i'm just trying to work out the best route really to get there i think it's going to be going up all the way around that way coming across the bridge and then down that track but then turning in might be a little bit tricky so we'll get that done then that's got to be delivered down here to town stores Oh, blimey, I've just suddenly realised we took on the contract. I'm going to need to get a trailer out there. <laughs> There's me thinking I'll get the harvester out there, just get, get just crack on with the harvesting. Probably need to put the soybean into something to deliver it, don't I? That would be a good idea. Right. See you in a bit. When we're up there with the harvester, we'll get that done. Uh, then we'll come back, we'll muck out. What? Is it every time I drive down here, someone goes, Whoa, I'm going to step out in the road? This is only just. I mean. We're pretty close to the sides. It still amazes me. I know I keep going on about it when I went to Agritechnica. And, you know, I know it's that kind of, oh, when you went out to Agritechnica, no one cares. Um, when you're out in the fields and you're out in the lanes and you're out in the countryside, you don't realise. It's only when you get down to and you've got the scale of a wall and you've got houses and buildings and the roadway, you suddenly look at these and think, my word, they're massive. And this is a small tractor. But it's not a small tractor, it's a fairly big tractor. Just on the scale of other tractors that are available, it's a fairly small one. Okay, see you in a bit.
find myself wondering what did happen to the last ten? I ran away with my life, fast forward, never turn back again. It's kind of funny that the more we pass time, the more we need to set the rewind. And our team was the year I had to leave you, but now I'm seeing all the signs. This really happening I can't believe it's true I'm just as surprised as you And there we go, as easy as that. <laughs> I really was not. <laughs> I'm thinking if we do get a combine for KCC here to pick up contracts like this, we might... I can totally understand why Court Farm has this, because if it's at their farm and their fields are all around their farm, easy peasy to get to. If you're doing contract work out in these lanes and through narrow gates and stuff like that, I honestly think we're going to have to look at something smaller. Which is frustrating. What you need is, is a smaller frame with a large hopper, like a hopper extension or something like that. So you can um, still have a fairly good capacity, but enough that it's, it's small enough to get in and out of gateways and through narrow... Because this, I mean, to be fair, it's a, it's a fairly, on, again, on the scale of harvesters, it's a fairly small harvester, but it's pretty chunky, isn't it? It's a chunky bit of kit. So we can have a look. I'm sure we'll find something else. We'll get this done, take it to town stores. And um, yeah, while I'm doing this, uh, I'll just a heads up um, on tomorrow, or while we're talking as well, percentage? How's everyone feeling today, percentage wise? 
Um, I reckon I'm up around a 70 today, maybe 75. Feeling a little bit better of myself. Miss Silly P seems to be getting worse with, with the, sort of the COVID, she's got it as well. Um, with her fall as well. Her fall's not so bad, her back's not as bad now. It's a bit bruised, but she's okay. Um, but she's really not well. Um, I was pretty bad a lot of last week. Still feeling tired and worn out, um, but not as ill ill, whereas she's far iller at the moment. Um, so I've been kind of looking after her and making sure she's got stuff and teas and coffees and that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, maybe a 75 I reckon. But yeah, heads up, on tomorrow. Tomorrow is the 26th, isn't it? Yes, the 26th. And I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to put up a video at all tomorrow. Um, because we have got, we've been putting them off for ages. I've been putting them off for two reasons. Um, we've got um, the people, uh, the, the people, um, we've got a smart meter installed um, for our el electricity um, and we've been putting it off and putting it off and putting it off and we've got quite an old, um, we need all our wiring we've done really, we need a new board, motherboard, motherboard you know the main sort of thing, it's quite old, um, but anyway um, they've been saying they need to come and do it and we keep putting them off, putting them off. Now the first reason was that all of my recording setup was under the stairs and all of the electrical box and panel and stuff they needed to get to was behind my desk. So um, for doing meter regions and stuff I, I, I cut a hole out of the doorway to it. There's, there's two little doors that open to get to the electrical panel. Um, I cut a hole in the front of the electrical panel so if we need to do meter readings you could just look under the desk, look through the hole and take a picture, no problem at all. But when they said they need to come and do that I said to Mr Silly P I'm going to have to take out everything. I'm going to have to take out all of my recording stuff, PlayStation, PC, the desk, everything's going to have to come out of that corner so they can get access to it to install the new smart meter. Um, so we put them off and put them off and that's why we kind of came to a bit of a crunch time with me moving out to the man cave because it was like well I've got to do it before and it was supposed to be uh, supposed to be tomorrow um, so Miss Silly P's trying to get it um, swapped again because she's not well and potentially Covid you know um, so we thought we'll just reschedule it and when she contacted them they said we've rescheduled it so many times that insistent that it needs to be done why I don't know um, and because they've got to do the, um, the smart meter on the electric board and the power's got to be off and so I, I don't know how long they're going to be I don't know when they're coming I don't know how long the power will be off for whether it's a quick thing they'll be in done out no problem at all um, she's still pushing for a rescheduling so potentially won't happen at all but just a heads up just in case there's no video tomorrow that is the situation um, as you know, well, you know it's when I came into the field, just up the lane a little bit, I bought the um, class with the trailer from Court Farm. That's how things are, we need to look at, we need to get our own trailer. I'll have a look at a few that are available and try and pick some, again, try and pick something I haven't used before, something fitting for here. I'm thinking maybe one of the, um, something maybe Irish, like a Bailey trailer or something along those lines or a Stuart trailer or something that sort of would fit the area that would fit this quite nicely I'm going to have a look and see what's available and see if we can get one which would be quite nice so uh, that's where we're at whoa that looks good I don't know if we're going to get a full um, We'll get a full load on the harvester, whether we'll get a full load on the actual trailer or not. I hope not, because there'll be a lot of backwards and forwards. I'm hoping to just get enough to fulfil the contract. I'm, I'm not going to keep hold of any of this. this we'll, take, we'll take it for the contract, we'll tip it, and whatever comes out on the end will be a bonus, if we get anything out on the end. If we don't, we don't. If we do, we do. Brilliant. Um, I'm not kind of banking on that. This seems to be one of those maps where the tolerances are quite tight. So whilst you might get a little bit left over, it's not not a huge amount. There we go. I shall continue. Farm dog came in with Silly G a little while ago. She bought me a coffee, which is very nice of her. As I said, Miss Silly P's not feeling very well. And she's not working today. So um, she's about. 
and farm dog came in, she's gone out and closed the door and now he's stuck. So I've got to go and let him out. <laughs> he's scratching at the door to get out. I'll see you in a bit when we're done, we'll see how much we've got. Then it'll be everyone back to court farm for tea and crumpets. Just past Stonebridge, heading down to the turn in for Town Stores, which is coming up on the right. Somewhere. It's just here. Got full trailer, 12,100 litres. There's 1,000. 500 and something or 1,600 left so I'm hoping I'm hoping this completes the contract so I don't want to, have to go back to the harvester and get the last little bit so fingers crossed on this uh, if we look to there we should be the first one not the bale one so we should be this one just here I have saved the game so we should be alright we'll see Come on. Whoa. 91 quid and an environmental score reward of a, a whole pound. Nice. Contract is complete, which means the little bit that's left we can put into storage if we want to. We don't have to, but we can. So what I'm going to do now is, actually we might as well drive, because I've got to take the trailer back up. So we'll drive back up to Court Farm, we'll um, drop off the trailer, we'll grab the plough, so I can come back over and plough the field. But while we're up there, I'll clean, uh, do uh, the mucking out, which is what I said I wanted to do. So the jobs we needed to get done, we have, well, almost done. Uh, that's completed, 2,488. Again, like I said, you know, a contract like that, it doesn't seem like a lot of money. And are we going to make our fortune? No. Are we going to be able to buy three, four harvesters? No, that's not what this one's about. This is not what the farming in this sort of area is about. Um, we're, no, we're never going to get to that scale of farming. You know, it's not going to be like Mike Mitchell or, you know, it's not going to be that sort of farming. Will that cover our, um, our farming lease at Stonebridge? Yes. Will it allow us, if we build up a little bit more here and there, 
to pick up bits of equipment as we go along. Yes, that's what we have been doing. I can get down there, I think, but it's a little bit tighter. We'll go out the main road so we're not cutting down an alleyway between people's houses. Probably the last thing they want. I also say it's late, but it's not. It's only 10 to 4. It's not particularly late, but it's the time of year we are starting to lose the light. We are here in the UK. When do the clocks change? This weekend, isn't it? I'm sure it's this weekend the clocks change, which means it's going to be getting dark about 4 p.m., 4, 4.30, something like that. Oh, this time of year sucks. And once we start getting a little bit further in and the, the mornings, it's like dark till nearly 8 a.m. You're getting up in the dark. I mean, say, going to bed in the dark. Yeah, normally you go to bed in the dark, but you know what I mean? It's just, oh, that time of year. Anyway, I'll show up at Court Farm in a minute. We'll drop this off and we'll get the mucking out done. Unfortunately, I can't move the cows. It's one of those things, if you could move the cows from one pen to another, for mucking out but the muck is all across the back of the pen where they all are actually to be fair we're going to have driven up there by the time we get up there it'll be time to do it anyway um, let's just turn the flashing beacons off we haven't got a full load so we should be alright the harvester is out to the side um, and I have I've, I've actually changed the place I put the header the header was in that barn that was was quite tight to get into I've moved it into the barn that's got the um, workshop in it also realised as well I got is that the farm dog was that no was there a dog in the did I imagine that am I seeing things I'm going mad I could have sworn there was something in the road. How weird. Or was it a deer? It might have been a deer, maybe. Yeah, just want to make life easier uh, for getting to the header and back. We should be able to just stick this in the silo, actually, to the side. Like I said, there's not a lot, but it's here. We could just take it and sell it for one and two, but it means going back to the sell point. Away, fold it up. This needs a bit of a whoosh. So what we'll do is don't want this to be in the way. Let's get some lights on. The other thing I do find as well, when you're doing, you see a lot of these farms and farmers and whatever, and they're working through the night, harvesting at night, and the lighting on these bits of equipment is, is crazy. I, I. I don't find the lighting to be as good as I, you would expect it to be. Does that make any sense? Where's the jet wash? Oh, I've gone far enough. I thought it was that corner, but it's not. Give the chickens a bit of a jet wash, clean them off. As soon as we haven't got any silage in it, how high is this shed to my side? Just thinking it might be easier as well. Is that too high? We'll have a look in a minute. Um, yeah, so I've put the harvest header in there, up in the back corner. The two tractors are in here now, which were in there before. So I'm thinking we could bring the trailer in here too. Is that another way? Oh, there's a few here. I think we might be all right, you know, height-wise. Yeah, we will. It's going to be easier to store this in here, I think. And then trying to get it through that tight bit. Yeah, we'll put it in here for the time being. If at some point we decide we're going to put um, silage in here, you can always do something about it, but engine off, hop out. Trying to be a little bit more efficient with what we're doing because it's quite tight getting in and out of here. Right. I'll bring that down, drop that off. I did it again in my head, thought, oh, this, this is going to be a fairly short one again. Of course it's not, is it? <laughs> not after my precision farming rant. <laughs> I'll, I'll be the first person to hold my hands up. When I've got something wrong, 
I will hold my hands up and say, look, you know, people have messaged me and said, look, this, this and this. I've gone away and checked it and gone, well, you know what? They're, oh, no. Oh, just suddenly remembered. I was just thinking I'm going to muck them out and I'll just stick all the, the manure in a pile there. Because we don't have a manure heap, do we? It's just all appearing. Here, look. That's where it is. Cow poots. Um, so I need to get in here and clean that out. But I was going to put it in that side bit and I forgot I left all the bales there. So I've got a little bit more I need to do. More than I was anticipating anyway. Oh. Oh my days. You know what we can do. I could bring the bales and put the bales in here, couldn't I? We just put them in the side there. If I grab the bale spike, just move the bales and put them in there. And then we can just pile them and you're in there for the time being. I know it's not it's not actually a manure heap, I'm pretty sure it's not a manure heap. Bottom bum bum. A little bit more than anticipated. Well, I'll get onto the ploughing in the next episode, or I might do it off camera, I'm not too sure. I could probably do the jet wash as well, but for the time being, we'll stick it in here. You can always move it. If we need to get any work done on the, on the equipment, we'll just put that there. We'll grab the plough. Now, I will probably plough with the... the um, the puma. I wouldn't. I won't plow with this. This is just to get it down. But this would be quite heavy anyway. Could probably do the weight on it. Probably. Uh, that should be in transport mode. No. That isn't transport mode, is it? That is, I'm sure that wheel's supposed to rotate, isn't it? So it's on the floor. That's all right. Okay, well, whichever way round. Mind the back of it on buildings as we go past. Stop that there. Let's grab the telehandler. So the bales weren't part of what I was intended to do, but I do need doing. Woohoo! This is at an angle, isn't it? I realised that last time. Shouldn't do three. Sure, I've said that when I moved them before. So nice and gentle, no sudden movements. <laughs> it's like when you've been hunted by a dinosaur, no sudden movements. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. That was a bit random. But a bit of good advice, there you go bit of advice there just in case at any point you ever find yourself being hunted by a dinosaur. Well, 
Right, so what we'll do is we'll go there. We've got a bucket, haven't we? Where did I leave it? Oh no, was it, was it another spike? I can't remember now. I'm sure we had a bucket here, didn't we? Oh, that's right, it says grab. Does that do manure? Or just silage? I'm about to find out. Oh yeah, manure fork. There we go. Sorted. As long as we can get through the gateway, we'll be alright. And this is what I miss. I said this before. Oh no, is that too wide? Oh, give me a break. You can't. Uh, maybe we go through that gate instead. Maybe that's the answer. Let's open all the gates and let all the cows out. Can I get round there? Oh, we're all about to find out. Aren't we? Yeah, I miss mucking out animals. I know I wouldn't be able to drive through the cows. But there's not really a lot I can do about it on here. Oh, that's full. I was thinking, that's weird, why does it not let me pick any more up? Because we're full. And that's where I'm going to leave you. I said we'd get to the mucking out. So we've done a few jobs, got a few bits done. We've got to the mucking out. It is starting to get really dark now. I mean, it's, it's lovely out where the sun's going down on the other side of the, of the hill, because we're looking on the top of the hill here. You've got the valley that sweeps down that side, but also as the sun goes down, this all then goes into shadow in front of us. But the other side of the hillside, it's glorious. It can be performed here, because it's just let me do it, look. So near. you what I mean because it's lovely I'll come back and carry on mucking out in a minute if I haven't lost too many cows <laughs> I mean, look at that sweet I hope you've enjoyed it if you have please give us a like if you don't subscribe yet please do if you want to leave a comment feel free and if you want to share this video then please be my guest Whatever you should choose to do, thanks for watching.